Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, the science behind cancer cure. Before we understand what this topic is all about, we have two small announcements. The first is in reference to the free IAS workshop, which will be conducted on 11th of June at 6 p.m. exclusively on the Baiju's Exam Prep application. All that you have to do is download the application and you would be able to attend this free workshop, which will be conducted by Sarmad Maharaj sir. What is the agenda of the workshop? This will be Mission 2023, Preparation Strategy for the UPSC CSE. So please to download our application and you would be able to attend this free IAS workshop. The next announcement is in reference to target means 2022. UPSC civil services examination is conducted in three phases. Preliminary, mains examination and interview. To help you in your preliminary examination, we did have the crash course on our YouTube. To help you further in your mains examination, what we have come up is with a comprehensive revision program to cover the entire UPSC main syllabus and that will be exclusively on our Byju's exam prep application. Do note, this will be a three months of intensive revision and practice program scheduled to be conducted from June 13th at 7.30 p.m. But remember, this is exclusively available on our Byju's exam prep application. So what is that you're waiting for? Follow the link given in the description box, download the application, and you would be able to clear your mains examination, which will be held from 16th of September, 2020. Let's get started and try and understand what is this topic all about. When we speak about cancer, cancer happens to be the leading cause of death worldwide. Accounting for nearly 10 million deaths in 2020 or nearly 1 in 6 deaths according to the World Health Organization. In 2020, the most common cancers are breast cancer which included 2.26 million cases, lung cancer which included 2.21 million cases, colon and rectum cancer which included 1.93 million cases and prostate cancer which included 1.41 million cases. So it is in this particular backdrop we have to understand the recent update with respect to a miracle drug and that is what this article speaks about. What exactly is the recent update? There was a clinical trial conducted on patients who were suffering from rectal cancer. In all patients, Rectal cancer was locally advanced. What do we mean by it? It means that all these tumours had spread within the rectum and in some cases to the lymph nodes but not to the other organs which is what is called as the locally advanced which means it was restricted to that particular part but did not move to other organs. So when we speak about cancer, what is cancer? It is uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells in the body and when we speak about rectal cancer, it is the cancer cancer of the rectum. Whenever a person is suffering from rectal cancer, there are signs of diarrhea, constipation and blood in the poop as well. This affects both men and women. In fact, men are slightly more likely to develop this particular disease. In the recent issue, there were patients who were given a particular medicine called as Doster Leap Mob. This medicine was administered to the patient for about 6 months in what is called as a limited clinical trial which was done by Memorial Sloan. On catering cancer center and all of them who had taken this particular drug had their tumor shrink at the end of this program. What was the observation made from this study? Individuals in the clinical experiment previously received treatment such as chemotherapy, radiation and invasive surgery all of which would cause bowel, urinary or sexual dysfunction. But now experts were surprised by the trial outcome. They stated that malignancy is undetectable by physical examination, endoscopy, positron emission, tomography or PET scans or in fact MRI scans as well. So they go on to say they were not able to find out the malignancy because of administration of this particular drug. Now the question is what is this malignancy? Malignancy basically is the tendency of the cancer to progressively worsen. In this particular case all these patients who are suffering from rectal cancer did not have any cases of progression or recurrence and has been reported with a follow-up as well. 
This shows that dostalimumab has the potential to be a possible cancer cure for one of the most lethal tumors. Now let's understand what is this dostalimumab. Dostalimumab was developed by Tisaro and sold to GlaxoSmithKline in 2019 happens to be a monoclonal antibody used to target the cancer. So dostalimumab is also known by another brand name called as Gemperly. So what are these monoclonal antibodies? So the monoclonal antibodies like dostalimumab are laboratory made antibodies which are designed to find a specific illness. So when we speak about antibodies there are two types of antibodies. One is what is called as polyclonal antibody. The second is called as the monoclonal antibody. Do note dostalimumab happens to be the monoclonal antibody. So what is the difference between the polyclonal antibody as well as the monoclonal antibody. When it comes to the polyclonal antibody, it is cheap to produce. But when it comes to the monoclonal, it is expensive to produce. When it comes to polyclonal, it has the mixed population of antibodies. But when it comes to monoclonal, it has single antibody species. When it comes to polyclonal, they may bind to different areas of the target molecule. But when it comes to monoclonal, it will only bind single specific site. Tolerant of small changes in the protein structure can be seen in the polyclonal clonal antibody but when it comes to the monoclonal antibody they may recognize a particular protein form so when it comes to dostalimumab this happens to be a monoclonal antibody and this dostalimumab also happens to be a immunotherapy drug this is specifically designed to block a particular type of protein involved in the cancer cells called as the pd1 what is this PD-1? This happens to be a checkpoint. There are multiple checkpoints like PD-1, PD-L1, CTLA-4 and B-7-1. This does not allow the body immune response. It blocks the body's immune response. Such is what is called as checkpoints. Now the question is, when it comes to the cancer, they are the abnormal cells that replicate uncontrollably in order to control cancer. What we have is two important methods. One is what is called as immunotherapy. The other is what is called as chemotherapy. When it comes to the immunotherapy, what does it do? These drugs help our immune system recognize the cancer and destroy it. So the ultimate goal or the objective of immunotherapy is to create a group of T cells that specifically target the cancer. And these T cells are a special type of white blood cells that attack the foreign invaders. So when we speak about immunotherapy, this stipulate a patient's own immune system and they attack the cancer cells. But when it comes to chemotherapy, it kills cancer cells directly. So what does immunotherapy do? It does not kill those cells directly, but it opens up the immune system in our body, allows the T cells activate themselves and ultimately these T cells will fight those cancer cells. Patients may take longer to respond to immunotherapy than chemotherapy as it takes time for the immune system to count an immune response. When it comes to chemotherapy, it indiscriminately kills rapidly dividing cells including both normal cells and tumor cells. Response to the therapy only occurs during active treatment. These are some of the differences between immunotherapy as well as chemotherapy. Why are we discussing this? That is because Dr. Dostarly mob is not to do with chemotherapy but instead it is to do with immunotherapy. So it makes use of immunotherapy to cure this particular cancer. There is another deficiency called as the mismatch repair deficiency. This mismatch repair deficient cancer is most common among colorectal, gastrointestinal and endometrial cancers. So this drug can be used for all these type of cancers. Let me elaborate this with the help of an image. What exactly happens in the cancer? When we speak about cancer, what we have is abnormal growth of cells in the cancer. So there is multiplication of cells as well. So whenever there is multiplication of cells, what exactly happens? You have the T cells which will be activated and they would be giving the immune response. But the T cells in this particular case would not be able to give the immune response. Why? Because there is something called as PD-1 which is the checkpoint which is not allowing the T cells to explore and provide reaction to this particular cancer cells. As a result, what we have is this particular drug which is acting as an anti-PD-1. It blocks the PD-1. Ultimately, 
it will allow the T cells to operate. So when we speak about immunotherapy, what exactly happens? It allows the body cells to act in a particular way. And as a result, because of this particular drug, the checkpoint will now be blocked and ultimately the T cells would be able to operate. And ultimately, this is acting as the immunotherapy drug. What are the challenges with respect to this particular drug? This particular drug can only be used in patients with the genetic property of mismatch repair deficiency. It may not be used for other kind of cancers and at the same time, the problem with immunotherapies is that they are quite expensive and people may not be able to afford it. So the first major challenge happens to be it is most expensive. The other is that it can be used only for the genetic property of mismatch repair deficiency. What is the way forward? As of now, this particular study or the clinical trial is conducted on smaller group of people. It was about 18 people, but over a period of time, this number has to be increased. There has to be more number of people on whom this experiment or the clinical trial has to be conducted. And if there are any adverse effects, the same will have to be notified by the study as well. Also remember, the long-term duration of protection from this particular drug is yet not known. How long will this particular drug able to safeguard that individual is yet not known. So this should also be identified and relevant information will also have to be given in the clinical trials. If dostalimab continues to demonstrate high level of success, it is able to provide long term cure as well. The future patients will be happy with respect to this discovery. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.